This message entitled, It's Really Possible, was delivered to Christ Our Rock Bible Church on October 15, 2017 by the Rev. Roy D. Warren, Jr. The scripture reference is Acts 19, 1-10. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'd like you to turn in your Bibles, please, to uh, Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. I don't think I mentioned earlier that t- today is the 20th Sunday after Pentecost, uh, unless I've <laughs> made an addition <laughs> uh, error somewhere along the line, but I believe it's the 20th Sunday after Pentecost, and you know you're getting close to uh, the season of Advent, <laughs> the Christmas season, uh, when you get into the 20s. I mean, there's still a few Sundays to go here, but... Um, you know you're getting close. So all summer long, you kind of count down the season and, you know, the seventh Sunday after Pentecost, the eighth Sunday after Pentecost, that's all part of the church year. It's all part of keeping a focus on what God is trying to speak in these different times. These different times. Does this sound familiar at all, people? These different times, right? It brings us back to that Advent. Amen? Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. So, yeah, today I believe is the 20th Sunday. So we're going to turn to Acts chapter 19. And uh, I've I've pretty well decided we're probably not going to get through all that we want to over the next several weeks before the Christmas season starts. So I was thinking we might go ahead and pick up where we left off after Christmas. I'm just thinking that that may be how we feel to be directed because there's, there's several other chapters to go in the book of Acts. And uh, quite likely it might be a good idea that we just uh, pick up on what, where we leave off with what we're talking about you know, now after Christmas is over. So we will see how the Lord leads that, but um, that might be it. Anyway, so Acts 19. Praise God. This is verses 1 through 10. Acts 19, verses 1 through 10. And it came to pass that while Paulus was in Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there was, whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. And Paul said, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of, of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. And he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. But when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannius. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Amen. Amen. There are several things in this part of the story in the book of Acts that point to what I'm about to say. So I don't have to take a verse and show it to you. You'll see it as we go. Uh, But uh, Paul is really being poured out here. Paul is really being poured out here. As he takes his time, he takes his time with them. Amen? For 
different lengths of time. And now lastly, at the end of the story, it says he spent two years with them. He's being poured out. His life is being poured out for the sake of these people who need Jesus. Do you know there are a lot of people in the world today that need Jesus? Amen? Really need the Lord. And that's going to take time. Do you hear me? Amen? Because we live in a world that just wants to kind of tell us we've got to keep on the move, you know. We've got to rush. And if there's no time to do this and there's no time to do that, then just forget it. Let's go ahead and do the Reader's Digest version. You know what I'm saying? But the fact is, Paul here makes it clear that he sees these things as being so important. I mean, we, he's even getting a lot of rejection going on here. And yet, he spends two years. A lot of times you might, you might have noticed that I have phrased sermon titles as a question. In this case it would be the question, you know, is it really possible? But notice I didn't do that. It's a statement of fact. It's really possible. Or it is really possible. A lot of times I could, I could look through old sermons and so forth and I would see a lot of times a sermon title was, was a question. You know, asking something for you to think about and, and then give an answer. You know, questions get answered. Alright? But I just felt very strongly this week, it can't be a question. It can't be a question today. It's got to be a statement of fact. It is possible. You'll see what we're talking about, of course, as we go, as we go along. But um, I want to mention that even from the get-go. There was a um, book that was written, oh, it was probably just a couple of years ago. It was called All In. Real short. <laughs> I don't know exactly how long the book was, but I mean, the, the, the title is is uh, pretty short. All in. Meaning all in for Christ. Meaning sold out for Jesus. Okay? The whole life given over to His Lordship. Talked with the children and everybody gathered up here. This is what this whole thing is about. Is loving Jesus. A whole lot. Amen? So the whole life is different. The whole life is changed. Anyway, the uh, author of this book, uh, Mike uh, Guzardo, uh, put it in... I'm not going to read the whole book. But I'm just going to read a couple of paragraphs. So here it is. The Bible clearly says that we should be experiencing love, freedom, joy, peace, and countless other promises of God's abundant life. When our lives look different from those promises, we may find ourselves asking, what's the problem? Is God's word no longer relevant? Or, the other half of the question could be, the other side of the coin could be, is my life being irrelevant? Since God's promises don't fade away. Amen? Now, he goes on to say this. The simple truth is that God's promises are as real today as they have ever been. The problem is uh, us, <laughs> quite frankly. The problem is us. Would you be willing to take a step of faith, laying aside your chains of fear, to trust your life to Jesus' guidance? 100%. I mean, we probably all do that 5%. 10%, maybe 15 or 20, maybe 50. But we're talking all the way. We're talking total immersion in the Spirit of God. Amen? So that His life, His Spirit, is touching everything of us. That's what, it, that's what this is. Okay? To be baptized in God's Holy Spirit. And the Bible also says fire. The Holy Spirit and fire. It will take a lot of commitment. That's obvious. 
Yes, there will be times when following Jesus' instruction will seem too difficult, but think about the alternative for just a minute. What about the alternative? Continuing to settle for a mediocre experience with God and a life that never really takes hold of a true fulfillment. I mean, I mean where do you get without being 100% sold out for Jesus Christ? I put this third paragraph in the paper this past week. And it said this. God has extended His hand as an invitation to lead you and me to a full life. I know deep in our hearts that we can long for more of God and the life He brings. If you will allow yourself to receive the truth that it really is possible, really is possible for you, desire will well up in your heart, urging you to respond. This simple response of the heart is how your journey will begin. Amen? You see, I'm not asking the question, is it possible? I'm telling you point blank, it's really possible. It is. Through the promises of God, through the Holy Spirit, it's very possible to have what we're talking about here. And not just have, but be. It's possible... The promises of God, you know, the Bible says, are yea and amen. That means yes and so be it. (laughs) Okay? The promises of God. You can trust Him when He says something. We can see and know this very thing about trust uh, as we take a look at Paul and his further journeys. Now, as you remember, we're not attempting to go through the book of Acts and look at every story, talk about every um, um, uh, verse uh, along the way. We're looking at some messages that God had for His early church. And there have been many. Okay? That's why we're not even done yet. We've been at this, what, most of the summer, I think, and fall. And so the Lord is is going to certainly reveal Himself through all of this. And there's more to come. Alright? Now we have to finish all of that after the first of the year, then so be it. I mean, we'll just see where it all goes. But I'm telling you, God's got a purpose in taking us to this place. We're not trying to look at every verse. We're looking at the messages. Because if the messages were valid and they were sent by God, and they were in those early days, well, the church is still the church. It's not supposed to be any different. It's not supposed, you know, but that's what a lot of people are saying. You know, God's doing a new thing, you know. We got to, you know, I told you before about the revival down in Florida that told everybody, throw your Bibles away. Throw your Bibles away. You don't need your Bibles. They're nothing but history books. God's doing a new thing. Well, I told you before that, yeah, God's doing a new thing, all right, but that new thing is Jesus. Amen? And that's already done. That's already been here. And praise God, He wants to take us into the depths of that. He wants to immerse us in that. So that every aspect of our lives is submerged. Okay? Submerged. In God. Alright. Well, so, in the process then, I've skipped over a few things to get to chapter 19. And I just want to make clear what happens in that time. If you were to take a look back in the last several verses of this, it mentions about Paul coming to Ephesus. And then he has been at Corinth, and we've talked about that. But then we're told he returned to Antioch, which is the first place that Christians were called Christians. And by the way, it wasn't a term of endearment. It was intended to be a put down. Okay? I mean, you know, Christians. <laughs> you know, so it wasn't, uh, you know, you know, pat on the back, oh, I'm a Christian. No, but 
but the people understood that what that means is to be a little Christ. To be a little Jesus. Okay? In other words, to have the same life that Jesus has. I mean, and why wouldn't we? If we are indeed allowing Him to touch every aspect of our lives, inside and out, okay, we, we would be His well, the Bible says, not only is Jesus God's son, but we are also sons of God, the Bible says. Okay? Praise God. Well, anyway. So he returns to Antioch, and then on to Ephesus. Now, it was in Ephesus, and I'm just giving you, you know, you can go back and read it through. I'm giving you the, what? Reader's Digest version? <laughs> uh, you know, just to make the point. Okay? It was there that this couple, Aquila and Priscilla, spotted Apollos. Okay? Now we talked about Aquila and Priscilla last time and how they came up in the area and they were tent makers and they worked with Paul and so forth. But now these two, Aquila and Priscilla, they spot this, they spot this guy named Apollos. Okay? He's newly arrived in town and they went ahead and took him under their wings. To help him. Alright? He had only known, and admitted to only knowing, the baptism of John for repentance. No, no mention of, you know, being baptized in the Holy Spirit. He was baptized for repentance. Which, by the way, is a big deal. I'm not putting it down. I'm just saying it's not the whole way. You know, Christians can figure, people could figure. I'll go ahead and get ankle deep. I'll go ahead and get, you know, knee deep. I'll go ahead and get waist deep. But I don't want to go, you know, all the way with this thing. And, and God's trying to make it clear that that's exactly what we need to do. Do you remember the story in Ezekiel, in the prophet Ezekiel, where it goes into the river and it gets deeper and deeper and deeper? And then pretty sure, that pretty soon there's got to be a swimming Amen? Alright? So, for the baptism of John was for repentance. And that's important. And it's certainly a good first or second step. Okay? But it's not the whole way. And the people that think it's just good enough to know God a little bit, you know, ankle deep, knee deep, and so forth, they're really sadly mistaken because it turns out that not only is the baptism of repentance found on the road to heaven, but so is the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. It's also on the road to heaven. So it may be a mile down, it may be a half mile down, it may be, you know, 500 yards down or something, but, you know, it's on the same road. So you come to it uh, inevitably. Inevitably. Alright? So it's not good enough to say, well, I only want so much. God says, you know, He, he wants us in the water. <laughs> Submerged. Alright. Okay. And, uh, praise God, so they then took Apollos Further, So let's go ahead and pick it up at Acts 19 and uh, beginning with verse 1. Okay? And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye be believed? Since ye be Believed. Have you experienced the Holy Spirit since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And here's where it comes out. They said, Unto John's baptism. I'll go ahead, I'm going to take the next few verses and I'm going to go back over this whole thing together. Kind of hard to split it up. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. 
And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. I always kind of got a kick out of that verse, you know, just because, you know, all the men were about twelve. Was it twelve? Was it eleven? Was it ten? You know, about twelve. It reminds me of the time that they, uh, they took a, a bunch of residents from Catanic Care and they took them to Crooked Creek for a picnic. And it says, about eleven returned. <laughs> now, that's a pretty definite number, eleven. But about eleven returned. I wonder, you know, almost felt like driving out there to see if I could spot anybody else. But, you know, ch chances are what they did is they picked up one or two on the way. <laughs> but anyway, so let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this. <coughs> Praise God. All right. These 12 disciples are not the 12 disciples that you always hear about. They're not the original disciples. These are 12 pupils, students, followers, disciples that Paul ran into while in Ephesus. Okay? Um, Ephesus Christians, disciples at Ephesus, were they Christians? Were they just disciples of John? Just exactly what was going on here. I want to take just a little bit of time and plow through that, if you don't mind. Some believe that they were actual Christians at that point. In fact, Luke calls them disciples. It's a word that he commonly uses for Christians, so it would kind of figure that's what he's talking about here. Had Luke meant to indicate that they were merely disciples of only John the Baptist, it seems like he would have been more explicit about it. Seems like he would have said that more clearly, but he doesn't. Paul speaks of them as already believing. And the word believed is used about 20 times in the book of Acts without a direct object. Believing what? Just called believers. You know, Christians believe. They're believers. But it doesn't mention what they believe in a lot of cases. In every other case, the context indicates that believing in Christ for salvation is really meant here. Other people maintain, I'm just trying to give you a broad perspective here. Other people maintain that the Ephesian disciples were indeed disciples of John the Baptist who were still waiting for the Messiah. After they heard about Jesus from Paul, they believed in Jesus now as predicted, as the predicted Christ and were born again of the Spirit. So, whichever way you look at it, whichever way it goes... Okay, it is clear that they are being filled with the Holy Spirit came after their faith. They already believed. Came after their baptism too. That baptism of repentance. Okay, and it also came after the laying on of hands. I, I want you to observe four things, four facts concerning Paul's question to the disciples at Ephesus. Paul's question strongly suggests that he regarded them as truly converted Christians who had not been yet filled with the Holy Spirit. Because some people try to suggest to you that if you're not, you know, baptized, immersed with the Holy Spirit, that you're not a Christian. And somebody's misreading something here. Okay? Because they were already... And wait a minute. Who did John the Baptist say he came to promote? He did not say he came to promote himself. He said he came to tell people about Jesus. Amen? Praise God. So these people have been baptized with John's baptism. But that was, to, that was coming into a believing on Jesus. Amen? Alright? So they had not yet been immersed with this Holy Spirit. 
Paul's question here refers to the baptism in the Holy Spirit for power and ministry. The same as that which happened to the apostles at Pentecost. Not at salvation, but at Pentecost. It cannot refer to the Spirit's indwelling presence in the believer, for Paul clearly knew that all believers have the Spirit dwelling in them from the very moment of their belief. You believe, you're saved. It's what Jesus said. It's what the Bible says. Amen? But there's a journey that you take. There's a, there's a walk with God that you take. There's a um, uh, walking closer and closer with Him, the hymn talks about. Amen? Nearer my God to thee, the hymn talks about. Amen? So when you're born again, you don't necessarily have everything that God wants to give you. So you keep with Him. You keep right there with Him on the road. Because eventually you come to deeper understanding and, and deeper experience with Him. Praise God. Alright. You back off from that. You don't come to it. It's on the road. These things are all on the same road. Amen? So you come through and, and uh, have uh, salvation. You keep on that road. And God's got more. Amen? Praise God. Alright. The literal translation of Paul's question is, Having believed, did you receive the Holy Spirit? Having believed, did you receive the Holy Spirit? The Greek word that is used here is pustosantes. And it comes from the Greek word pisteo, which a lot of times is translated as faith. Okay, having believed. This is actually in what's called in the Greek language the aorist principle or the aorist tense. Aorist is kind of like past tense. But, you know, little idiosyncrasies along with it. It normally indicates an action prior to the action of the main verb. And in this case, the main verb is to receive. So there's an action that's happening before, prior, it says here, to the action of the main verb. Hence, we can render the question this. Did you receive the Holy Spirit after you believed? You get that? You see the nuance there? Did you receive the Holy Spirit after you believed? King James says, since you believed. This translation agrees fully with the context of the passage, for this is exactly what did happen to the Ephesian believers. They had already believed in Christ before Paul even met them. They then instantly listened rather to Paul and further believed went deeper went on with God praise the Lord and, and all told him about Christ and um, oh they listened to Paul and 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 the further believed went deeper in their belief uh, about Christ and the Holy Spirit Paul then considered the Ephesians belief in Christ to be genuine to be adequate but he was going to take them deeper. For he baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus. It was only then, after their belief, and after their water baptism, that Paul laid hands on them, and the Holy Ghost came upon them. It says in verse 6. There had already been a belief, there had already been a water baptism, there had already been this stuff. There had already, they already got baptized by John the Baptist for repentance. Okay? But now the Holy Spirit comes. Thus there was an interval of time between their belief in Christ and the coming of the Spirit in power. Paul's question here indicates that he thought it quite possible. I said, quite possible. Quite possible to believe in Christ without experiencing the baptism in the Holy Spirit. See, that's the problem with looking at this baptism as a noun. Because <laughs> we talk about it that way. You know, the baptism. It sounds like it's a noun. It's a thing. It's a, it's a thing to get. 
and now you got it under your belt and now you're all set. I've heard people talk like this. Okay? It's not that. It's an experience. It's a deepening down further into the water experience, praise God. An immersion. That's literally what the word baptize means. This passage is decisive in showing that one may uh, be a Christian uh, even prior to the fullness of the Holy Spirit. The response of the Ephesian believers to Paul's questions does, does not mean that they have never heard of the Holy Spirit. Because that's the way you normally take it. That's the way that they never heard of it. Okay? They certainly had been acquainted with not only Old Testament teaching about the Spirit of God. Okay? So they certainly knew that. And they most assuredly had heard John's message. After all, they were baptized with John's baptism. So they would have heard John's story. They would have heard John's message. And what was it? That I came to baptize with water, he said. But Jesus comes to baptize in the Holy Spirit and fire. Do you hear me? They certainly would have known something of the Holy Spirit. Okay? They most assuredly heard John's message concerning the baptism of of the Holy Spirit, which Jesus was going to bring. They had not yet heard that the Spirit was being poured out upon believers. That's probably the angle of their statement more than anything else. We did not know that this was being poured out on people. We never even heard of this thing. water baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus of these 12 men at Ephesus testifies that they had saving faith they were born again by the Spirit and that if they went deeper and they went further down that trail towards heaven they would indeed not only be filled with the Holy Spirit but baptized in the Holy Spirit see you could take that glass and you could fill it to the brim. And you'd be able to say that that was filled. That cup was filled. You can't get another drop into it. You know, it even heaps up because water tension, you know, on top of the glass. But the sides don't have water touching it. The bottom doesn't have water touching it. You see? It's not just being filled. There's an immersion. Amen? And God is so gracious. And God is so merciful. And God is so loving that He wants to bring us into all of it. Glory to God. Amen? Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Look at verse 8. Look at verse 8. And he went into the synagogue and spake boldly. Spake boldly for the space of what? Three months. It's a long time. Three months disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. Some people are believing. Some people aren't. I already went through his whole itinerary last week and showed you. Some people believed. Some people did not. That's just the way it is. Alright? But when divers were hardened, this word divers actually is the Greek word tinnis. T-I-N-E-S. It is a form of the word tis, which is T-I-S. And some of you know what that is. I've mentioned it numerous times. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands or anything. But it means certain. Tis means certain number of people. This one, this one, and this one. And this one over here. Certain number, certain people. Okay? 
certain people were hardened. They didn't like what was going on. They didn't want to hear from Paul anymore. And they spake evil of that way before the multitude. So he departed from them. You know, I mean, what are you going to do? Beat people on top of the head until they finally go, oh, okay, I, you know. There's all kinds of jokes about that. You know, getting the biggest, blackest King James Bible and just pounding people on the head with it to force them to believe. That's not what Jesus did. That's not what God is, is talking about here. Okay? They didn't want it, so he separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. Now, nothing much is known about this Tyrannus, um, except what his name means. <laughs> you can about guess what his name means, right? His, his name means tyrant. That doesn't mean he was one. It just means his name means that. I told you before, I, did a, I think I even did a series on this, and if I didn't, I'll be glad to. You can go through names in the Bible, and you can see positive and negative names. Now, why somebody would name their kid negatively is, you know, hard to really grasp, but, you know, but it happens, and there's all kinds of, you know, uh, positive and negative names. Well, I'll tell you where it makes sense. It's, be, it's to show whether or not that person went that way. Did that person go that way, or did that person decide to not go the way of their negative name? You know? Like Jacob, for example, his name meant schemer. That doesn't sound too positive. Well, he was a schemer. That's the kind of stuff he did. He, he schemed all kinds of stuff. And, and, you know, but he changed. God got a hold of his heart and brought him back to Canaan. And, you know, and away goes the family, praise God. Amen? Alright? So this Tyrannus, we don't know who exactly what this is, but it was his school. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, he had the keys to it and everything. <laughs> and let people in where he wants to and where he doesn't. Anyway, it says here that um, he owned this, he had this school, disputing in the school of one Tyrannus. Now, it's not necessarily literally a building with doors and keys and locks and all that kind of stuff. When you talk about a school, it means a school of thought. It means this group of people thought this way. This group of Pharisees thought that way. This group of scribes thought this way. Okay? They would call that a school. Okay? Now, I don't know what this Tyrannus was like, all right, but it was evidently a lecture hall, and he was allowed to come in there and share his stuff, Paul was, that is, for the space of two years. It says, this continued by the space of two years. Now, remember, he's got people against him. He's got people for him, and he's got people against him. You know? And so, there's a... There's a, um, a separating from those people that were being negative and bad and, you know, etc. and so forth. But he still continued to give the truth. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Amen? There's your message. What's the message? Jesus. Amen? To both Jews and Greeks alike. Praise God. There's the message. And it's the, it's the same message today. Give Jesus. Amen? Share Jesus with other people. Go God's way in this thing. And give it time. A lot of people want to give it like one day. <laughs> and if they get any opposition, it's, you know, you know, out of there. Give it some time. And before you know it, everyone around is going to end up being touched by the word that you have to give. Now, some may still say no. Some may still say no. But some say yes. And you may not know until you get up to heaven who's all said yes. Amen? You might not know. You know, we find out all the time 
different people, like I told you about my cousin Rick and so forth. You know, he can't wait for the newsletters to show up at his house. He can't wait for the Advent devotional booklet. He loves reading these things. He wants these. I never would have guessed that. I never would have guessed that. And there's a lot of other people I wouldn't guess it about either. Who knows? You know? Who knows? You don't know who's hearing you. You don't know who's being affected by what you have to say to them about Jesus. You don't know. All you know is it's in God's hands. And I can't think of better hands to put it in. Praise God. Amen? I mean, He's the one that's got it all. He's the one that knows it all. He's the one that wants each one of us to go deeper and deeper and deeper. Praise the Lord. Yes, it is really possible by a total immersion in the will and the ways of the Holy Spirit. Now we're not talking about just wading on the shore. You know, getting the bottoms of your feet wet. We're not talking about going knee deep. And especially if you're early in the summer and maybe in the spring and you're visiting the lake, that water is cold. That water is real cold. And maybe that's all the far you get is your feet. And then you've got to get them out or they freeze on you, you know. I'm not talking about wading. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about diving into the depths. Now, if you want to go ahead and become one of these polar bear guys, you know, that go down to the river, what, on January 1st, and jump in, ice included, and all you can do that if you want. It's, you know, I mean, it's an event. They, they do it, you know, but that's not what I'm talking about. Amen? I'm talking about spiritually. Glory be to God. Spiritually. It is not only possible, but it will be on the path that takes God's people all the way. And even all the way to heaven. It will be on the path. So people that say, I only want a little bit of God, and you know, not to go deeper with Him, and not to experience more of Him, and learn from Him, and all of that, they're going to be, they're going to have a hard issue to deal with when they get along the road, and, and, and boom, there's this deeper thing that God is calling for, but they don't want to go any deeper. So, you know, get it settled right now. If you're on the road to heaven, you got to know that all these things are going to be there. And praise God, He's going to be the one to help you get all the way through it. Amen? He's not going to count. He doesn't count on you to get it right. He's not counting on you to figure it all out and, 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 and somehow be able to you know, pull it off in your own strength. He's not counting on that. In fact, He knows you're going to flub it up. Right? Because if you're, doing, if you're doing things to serve Him in the flesh, you might as well forget it. Because it's not in the flesh. It's in the Spirit. Glory be to God. Amen? Amen? So it really is possible. Amen. Glory be to God. So I'm not asking the question. I'm simply telling you. It really is possible. Praise God. Father, we thank you. We thank you because we know that you, have, you had quite a message for them back at that time concerning these things. And you have quite a message for us too. The same message. We need to know it too. And I want to thank you for that, dear God. Every time, really. Every time. We've never run across a message yet that was out of date. We've never run across one, Lord, that's out of date. Every one of these messages, dear God, is for your church today. And so we thank you, Lord. We praise you. Oh, there's different details. Of course, yes. There's different details. There's different things that are brought up and so forth that, that aren't um, uh, in this day. But, Lord, that's, we can't be nitpickers about this, dear God. We've got to recognize that the message is the message. And the message is Jesus. And that doesn't change. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our God changes not. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. We give you the glory. 
We thank you, Lord, for empowering us with your Holy Spirit, leading us, taking us, dear God, to the next step, showing us, dear God, where we can reach out and give Jesus and, and live Jesus in front of other people. This is good. This is important. This is what you're calling for. But we need your Spirit. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Lord, for the Spirit you've given. I thank you, Lord, dear God, that we can indeed keep moving on in you because you have given yourself in these last of days. We thank you, we praise you, and all the glory, dear God, to your holy name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.